Welcome, boys and girls, to our very last section, and that is on polar graphs. Um, in this video, well, in the next three videos, we're going to look at converting polar equations to rectangular and vice versa. And then we're going to find the slope of a polar function. And then we're going to do the arc length of a polar function. So I want you to recall from pre-calculus, and these notes can be found in your notes packet on page 12, that the point of a polar graph is r theta. So it looks like an ordered pair, but we have to remember that it's not, that this represents um, r and this represents theta in a polar graph. These formulas are very important in um, calculus, and so I would strongly suggest that you um, memorize them, make uh, some note cards for them, uh, because they're very important. And you probably remember them from pre-calculus. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Um, X, these two will come up quite often in, in calculus. Um, these, this one and this one not so much, but these two definitely come up a lot in calculus. So we're going to start by converting rectangular to polar using the information that we were just given. So we know um, just from what we were just given that X squared plus Y squared is R squared. And we know that x is r cosine theta. So if I want to convert this just to polar, I can factor out an r. And from using our algebra skills, we can solve this by 1 saying r is equal to 0, which we know that that, is, that does not seem to be true. So using the second equation, we can say r, moving 2 cosine theta to the other side, r is equal to 2 cosine theta. And now we've gone from rectangular coordinates to a pol polar graph, a polar form. OK? All right, let's do another example. Um, we could do this several different ways. Um, we could start by remembering that x is our cosine theta. And y is r sine theta. So we have r squared um, sine theta cosine theta is equal to 4. So therefore, r squared is equal to 4 over sine theta cosine theta. OK? Or we could write that as, if you prefer, 4 secant theta, cosecant theta. Both forms are acceptable. And our final one is x equals 10. And that's simply x is r cosine theta. So therefore, r is equal to 10 over cosine theta. We could write it as 10 secant theta. Let's go the other way around. Let's go from polar to rectangular. So we go to rectangular. That means we're trying to put it in x and y. We want x and y values here. So we start by not noticing that secant theta can be written as solving, multiplying r cosine, we get r cosine theta is equal to 3. Well, what is r cosine theta? That's correct, it's x, so we can write that as x is equal to 3. Okay, so we have something similar here. We have negative secant theta, tan theta. Um, we know that tan theta, from the previous slide, tan theta is equal to, um, the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And we can write this as negative 1 over cosine, and that's equal to r. Well, if we multiply both sides by negative cosine theta, we get negative r cosine theta is equal to y over x. And we know negative r cosine theta is simply x, negative x. So we could say y is equal to negative x squared. Okay, and the last one is theta is equal to pi over 6. 
So once again, we're going to go back to the knowing that tangent theta is equal to y over x. That's the one that we were given before. So therefore, theta is equal to the tangent inverse of um, y over x. So we can write this, and we know that that is because we know this is equal to pi over 6. So we can write this as, <coughs> excuse me, we know that tangent theta is equal to y over x and that um, theta is equal to the tan inverse of y over x, which is pi over 6. I don't think I need that part, though. I don't need this to know that. I just need to know that tangent theta is equal to y over x. So therefore, that y over x is equal to the tangent of pi over 6. Um, using our unit circle, we get y over x is equal to uh, the tangent of pi over 6 is um, 1 over radical 3. So therefore, y is equal to x over radical 3. Okay? I'll give you a minute to, to think about that. So we knew that tangent of theta is equal to y over x, and we knew that, um, that theta was pi over 6. Um, so then the tangent of pi over 6 because theta is pi over 6. So the tangent of pi over 6 had to equal to y over x. So then I multiplied both sides. Um, then I found the tangent of pi over 6, which is 1 over radical 3. Multiplying both sides by x, I get y is equal to x over radical 3. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. Okay, so that is all for video 1, and that was just pretty much a review of precalculus. So let's watch video 2 to see some calculus.